Hello there. Hey guys, what to watch for for Thursday in the NBA. Four games on, let's talk about them. The first one is the Trevor Ariza Bowl, the Blazers and the Rockets. I want to watch Enes Kanter, who's putting up some pretty good numbers. His block rate is also significantly higher than what it has been in the past. So that has some intrigue for me. What's he doing? He's a must-roster guy at this point, but I just want to see how he looks, and especially how he looks next to Carmelo Anthony, considering Covington's out again. And then do they go back to Gary Trent starting? Rodney Hood was out last game with a thigh issue. I imagine they go to Trent, but maybe they go back to Hood. And can Trent do literally anything outside of scoring? That is, That has been the question with him for the entirety of his career. So let's see if he's able to provide that. For the Rockets, probably the biggest thing of the entire day to watch is DeMarcus Cousins. 30-plus minutes in three straight games without the crucifix Christian Wood. Now Wood returns. Steven Silas is talking, oh, we've got to give Cousins more minutes. I've got Rockets reporters pushing back, telling me he's just not going to play them together. So what are we getting here from Cousins? Because if he plays 23 minutes a night, he's a 12-team league guy. If he plays 15 minutes a night, 14 minutes a night, backing up Wood, he's not even close. So we want, as soon as we see, if he gets five minutes next to Wood, then it's a must roster. Now, I think we hold him just to see what happens, but I, I this is the biggest thing I want to watch. And then I want to watch David Nwaba, who's been putting up some good numbers, but it is hard to work out what his role is going forward. John Wall's minutes are limited. We've got uh, Danny House. His minutes are limited at the moment as well. So when those guys get cranking back up, what's Nwaba going to do? Could Nwaba take over from House this year and be that bench defender sort of guy who racks up more defensive stats than what House does? Not bench, but, you know, defend uh, House as a starter. Is there a chance that he could yeah, cut into that playing time? I'm really intrigued to see how Nwaba looks here coming off his Achilles injury. Next up is the Lakers and the Pistons, the Dennis Rodman Bowl. Anthony Davis copped a little bit of a hit on Wednesday. Had to go to the bench for a little bit of time, had some work done on it. He hasn't been anywhere near his best this season. Will he even play? In this game, I guess that's uh, the question. So let's see how he looks. Let's see if he can get some efficiency going. The defensive stats are back for him. While Mark Gasol... Oh, hi, Mark. I just haven't really paid a ton of attention to Gasol. He, the lineups with him in them have been really good this year. He, he provides strong passing, really good defense. The opposite of what Montrez Harrell does. And exactly what they need in that starting lineup. But Gasol, you just want to see how he works and how he's playing off these other guys. For the Pistons, D-Line Wright, really good game on Wednesday. Big numbers. Um, it's because Derek Rose was shit house though. So let's see if Roy, if Rose plays a better game, if Rose even plays, what D-Lon's role is. And then Mason Plumley, who is inconsistent as anything at the moment, putting up some solid games at times, some piss poor ones at other times. I just don't see any other option for them to go to at center. I, I, I know Isaiah Stewart isn't ready. And Dwayne Casey, if Dwayne Casey's force feeding minutes to Wayne Allington, then he's not just going to put blokes in who aren't ready just for the sake of it. So Plumlee's role is pretty safe, but let's see if he can do something more than what he's been doing in the last couple of games. Next up, the Raziel Butler bow, RIP to Raziel Butler. The Clippers and the Heat. No Paul George, no Kawhi Leonard, no Patrick Beverly. Reggie Jackson went bananas last game. Can he do it again? My money would say no, but he's still a relatively solid option here. I also want to watch to see what Luke Kennard and Marcus Morris are able to do because they weren't that good in that first game. But let's watch Reggie Jackson. He's a strong, strong pickup. And Terrence Mann's a really good 14-team league ad and can have some 12-team value. He had nine boards and four steals in that first game. Now, I don't expect him to put up big, big numbers. But if he starts and plays a lot of minutes, then he's worth looking at. While for the Heat, we saw Kendrick Nunn start on Wednesday. Will he get another start? Or will Jimmy Butler be back? Will Tyler Hero be back? Where's Nunn going to fit into everything when the Heat regain all their players? And then bam, out of buyer. Who's been awesome? Bam! Really, we just want to see what Bam is able to do, especially when Jimmy Butler returns, and to how he looks out there and his yeah, usage and his shooting and his decision-making, because he's been so, so good this year. The next game is the Marquise Chris Bowl, the Warriors and the Suns. Blunty. Where are you now? James Wiseman coming off the bench. Um, yeah, how's he going to go against DeAndre Ayton and maybe Dario Saric is back for the Suns? Let's see what Wiseman actually looks like. I was absolutely astounded when NBA put out an article with the rookie ladder on it and had James Wiseman moving up to number one. He is not in the best five rookies this season so far. And the fact that they put him at number one was like, what game are you actually watching? I want to watch Draymond Green as well. Can he actually block a friggin' shot? That'd be good. I think he's had two blocks all season. 
He's getting assists, but he's doing nothing else. And he needs to get something else to remain a 12-team league guy. For the Suns, Jay Crowder, um, your mate. Sometimes it may be good, sometimes it may be shit. Will it be a shit one? Will it be a good one? Will uh, Devin Booker play? So will Crowder start? Is he worth streaming? I think he is. And then DeAndre Ayton, who's been really good over the last week or two. Um, can he continue that level of aggression and the level of shooting and the level of defense that, honestly, he's shown all season, not just in this little uh, stretch of time? And then we look at some streams. Gary Trent. We've got a couple of uh, Clippers guys. Luke Kennard, Reggie Jackson, Marcus Morris, and Jay Crowder as well. But you might be able to look at Lou Williams as another option. Terrence Mann for the Clippers. Uh, Rodney Hood for the Blazers, some stream options with those four games on. Tomorrow, 3.30 p.m. Eastern, I'll be doing a live mailbag, a special edition live mailbag. It is my birthday, so if you ever said, man, I wish I could buy Josh a present, why don't you join into the live mailbag, and then you can buy me a present right there by just being there and throwing your questions out. So get around that, 3.30 p.m. Eastern on YouTube, live mailbag. Get your questions ready. Get your birthday cakes ready. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. So yeah.